Hello everybody, today we will be talking about stable storage. Stable storage means the storage of the data that are stable. It's essential for some computer applications that data never be lost or corrupted even in the face of disk and central processing unit CPU errors. Ideally, a disk should work all the time without any errors, but unfortunately it's not achievable. Here, achievable is that a disk subsystem that has, a po that has a property such that when a write is issued to the disk, then the disk is either correctly writes data or it does nothing, leaving the existing data intact. This type of system is called stable storage. Stable storage uses a pair of identical disks with corresponding blocks working together to form an error-free block. Corresponding blocks on both drive, both, both drives are the same in absence of errors. Either one can read to get the same result. It can handle a written sector that suddenly becomes unreadable and CPU fails, leading to incorrect data. So, how can we achieve stable storage? The three, go the three operations that are described in the table given below are defined to achieve the goal. Stable write. It consists of first writing the block on drive 1 and then reading it back just to verify that whether or not it was written correctly. If not, then 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 the write and reread are done again up to n times until they work completely. Stable read. It first reads the block from drive 1. Now in case if this yields an incorrect ECC then read is tried again up to n times. And in, a, and in case if all give bad ECCs, then the corresponding block is read from drive 2. A successful stable write leaves two good copies of the block behind, and the probability of the same blocks spontaneously going bad on both drive, drives in a reasonable time interval is ne negligible. Therefore, a stable read always succeeds. Crash recovery. Whenever a crash occurs, then a recovery program or code scans both the disk comparing corresponding blocks. Now, if blocks pair both good and same, then nothing is done. And when one of the block pair has an ECC error, then the bad block is overwritten with the corresponding good block. To achieve such storage, we need to replicate the required information on multiple storage devices with independent failure modes. The writing of an update should be coordinate in such a way that it would not delete all the copies of the state and that, when we are recovering from a failure, we can force all the copies to a consistent and correct value, even if another failure occurs during the recovery. In this, we discuss how to meet these needs. The discrete operation results one of the following outcome. Successful completion. Data will be written correctly on disk. Impartial failure. Failure occurs in the middle of the data transfer so that only some sectors were written with the new data and the sector which is written during the failure may have been corrupted. In total failure, the failure occurred before the disk write state started so the previous data values on the disk remain intact. Okay, um, so we have we have a figure here. It basically explains the process of output operation execution. During writing a block somehow if a failure occurs the system First work is to detect the failure and then invoke a recovery process to restore the consistent state. To do that, the system must contain two physical blocks for each logical block. An output operation is executed as follows. First, to write the information onto the first physical block. Second, when the first write completes successfully, it writes the same operation onto the second physical block. And third, when both operations declare successfully, it declares the operation as complete. 
So uh, the schema on the left demonstrates those steps, as you can see. During the recovery from failure, each of the physical blocks is examined. If both are the same and no detectable error exists, then no further action is necessary. If one block contains detectable errors, then we replace its content with the value of the other block. If neither block contains detectable error, but the block differs in content, then we replace the content of the first block with the content of the second block. This procedure is the recovery gives us a conclusion that either the right to stable content succeeds successfully or it results in no change. This procedure will be extended if we want an arbitrary large number of copies of each block of the stable storage. With the usage of a large number of copies, the chances of fail failure are reduced. Generally, it is usually reasonable to simulate stable storage with only two copies. The data present in the stable storage is safe unless a failure destroys all the copies. The data that is present in the stable storage is guaranteed to be safe unless a failure destroys all the copies. Because waiting for disk writes to complete is time consuming, many storage arrays at NVRAM as a cache. Since the memory is non volatile, it can be trusted to store the data and route to disks. In this way, it is considered as a part of the stable storage. Writing to the stable storage is much fast, faster than, than to disk. So performance is greatly improved. The figure here shows if the crash of the CPU occurs during the time, in, time of write. Then the disk on the stable storage could be recovered in a consistent state and the property given could be maintained even after the crash of the CPU occurs during the procedure of recovery. Consider the figure given where no recovery is required for figure A and E. Next, consider that the CPU crash occurs during the recovery as it occurred in figure B. Then, if the CPU crash occurs before the block given and formed drive 2 that has been copied completely into the drive 1, so the situation remains the same as of the earlier. Next, the subsequent procedure of, of recovery would then detect an error ECC message within drive 1 and then again copies the block from drive 2 to drive 1. So if the CPU crashes after the drive 2, drive 2 block that has been copied to drive 1, then the situation is the same as in the case of E. Now, consider that the CPU crashes occur during the recovery as in case C. Then, before the block has been copied, the copied from drive 1 to drive 2, while the situation is the same as in the case of D, the given method could be detected an ECC error within the drive 2 and copies the block from drive 1 to drive 2. If the crash of the CPU occurs after the block has been copied from drive 1 to drive 2, then the situation remains the same as in case E. Finally, consider that the crash of the CPU occurs during the recovery as in case of D. If the CPU crash occurs before the block has been completely copied from drive 1 to drive 2, then the situation would be the same as in the earlier cases. The given procedure would detect an error ECC message within drive 2 and then will again copy the block from drive 1 to drive 2, then the situation of case E would take place again. Here are the documents and slides I have used. Special thanks to Jeff Saigon. Um, these slides are based on his lectures. So thank you all for listening to me and have a nice day.